Hello everyone, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. I'm Cassie, I love you. Thank you for being here. You look great today. Today I'm doing a matinee viewing, which I don't usually do, but I'm excited about it. My energy is higher. I, okay, I'm watching the right stuff. And after I loved Apollo 13 so much, I got so many requests for this movie. And I keep seeing it pop up and I'm like, oh, I wanna watch that. And then over Christmas, I was watching some stupid TikTok or something and I saw a movie or a thing about space and space exploration. But um, I immediately was like, oh, I'm craving a space movie now. So I am watching the right stuff. This movie comes highly recommended and I'm really excited. Between this intro and starting it, I might do a teeny tiny bit of research because I, I like to go into movies blind, but for this one, I feel like maybe I should know even what space exploration event we're talking about. Um, I think this is an 80s movie, which I love. I don't know who's in it or anything. Uh, like I said, I might at least read the synopsis or something. Okay, if you are new here, would you hit that like and subscribe button? That would be so helpful. It helps me know what kind of content you guys like on the channel. And we have a very fun, happy community. And I feel really lucky to mostly have very positive, uplifting, and amazing comments and community here. And then we also have a Patreon community right here is where you can link it and you can join this community. There's different tiers, three, six, $10, $15 tiers, any of those and those give you early access. You can help vote on the polls to help me pick what I'm gonna watch next and it's so much fun over there. Uh, okay, let's watch the right stuff. Let's go to space. There was a demon that lived in the air. Whoever challenged him would die. Their planes would buffet wildly and they would disintegrate 750 miles an hour where the air could no longer move out of the way. They called it the sound barrier. Then they built the X-1 to try and break the sound barrier. Men came to the high desert to ride it. They were called test pilots. Who would volunteer for this? They dropped the planes out of those planes? Mark 0 0.95, 0 0.96, 0 0.97. Oh my gosh. <gasps> no. Wait. No. Go away. Oh my gosh, the kids. <sighs> okay, wait, isn't that what they were trying to do at the beginning of Top Gun Maverick? Is like pass Mach 10 or something? I feel like that would give me like PTSD as a wife. <laughs> Does he like it or is he scared of it? I can't tell. on your wall. Flick over there do not have his picture. What do you have to do to get your picture up there? You have to die, sweetie. Don't just stand there in the doorway. Yeah. Look, Slick, you could be the first man who breaks the sound barrier. Some people say the sound barrier can't be broke. Trolls will freeze up on you, can't budge a stick. Well, now, maybe it can't be broke. Then again, maybe it can. Slick. You to be broke for a specified sum. You give yourself that nickname? 150,000. Slick, give us a break. Non-negotiable. I mean, it is his life. I probably wouldn't do it for any amount of money. Jaeger's his name. Some kind of war hero. Shot down five Germans. He's a natural born stick and rudder man. You know of any problems with him? Only one holding him back. Hey there, Jaeger. Jaeger. Now we feel that the X-1 is ready to have a go at it. So what do you think, Jaeger? Well, I'll tell you what, half these engineers never been off the ground. If you ask me, I don't believe the damn thing even exists. She looks like the, the fiance from Twister. Uh, how much? How much you got? I'm just joking. The Air Force is paying me already, ain't that right, sir? Well, sure, Jaeger, but. So when do we go? Well, how about tomorrow morning? 
I'll be there. You ever been caught out on the desert alone? Never have. I don't think I ever will. Never did meet the man who could catch me. Half a jackrabbit. Forget it, fly boy. A fly boy? Never catch me. I believe I will. Do they know each other? Could I ask you something? She's his wife. She's his wife? I like how he just completely ignores her. Just walks away. Come on, baby. Come, 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 come. Yeah. This is romantic. Hey! <laughs> Does she know he's gonna risk his life tomorrow morning? <laughs> Talk to you a second? Yes, sir. Yes. I got a little problem. Horse threw me over at Poncho's last night. I said, take my ribs up. Well, you might say I like a broke a couple of times. Your left side okay? Yeah. Try to fix you up a handle. Thanks, man. He's gonna do it still? I need to borrow your broom handle here just for a second. They're gonna jimmy rig something right now for something this serious? <laughs> I don't feel like rights are being read, precautions are being taken. I don't feel like we're being serious enough. I don't know. I also don't feel like he's scared enough. October 14, 1947. Oh, BT Dub, I did not look up anything about this movie, the space event or anything, so. There she is, partner, ready to go. Stick this in the handle. Just wang it down. Um. Oh, frick. <coughs> Can he even fly with one? Is there a checklist we should go over? Free drop checklist complete. <laughs> checklist. So my question is, what did they change from the last time that it did not work to this time specifically? Probably have very little control when it's going that fast. gotta land properly, right? Is that gonna be an issue? I just want him to be on the ground and safe. Who are you calling? Press. This is big news. No, sir. No press. No word of this is to go beyond the flight line. Maybe they don't want someone to know. The Russians, maybe. And that's the way it is. <laughs> Look at him standing on it. Go, Grease Lightning. <laughs> word will get out, Major. Pretty soon, every fighter jock in the country will be headed this way. Oh! I don't think I like that. Where's Air Force Base? 1953. Okay. This is the place to be, huh? Going faster and higher here than anywhere else. I'll tell you something else, too, honey. Just a matter of time before we get ourselves right off that old ladder. I mean, you. Hey, hun, we're a team. Aww. Here's the best pilot you ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the little girls with their head wrapped. You're looking at it, baby. Did I ever let you down? Yikes. Everyone looks so vaguely familiar to me. Yager did, his wife, this woman. This doesn't... Sheesh. Oh, no. 
So since Yager did it, have have a lot. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's Dennis Quaid. Is that Gus Grissom from Langley Field? What is an ace like you doing in a place like this? That is young Dennis Quaid. Gordo uh, Cooper, right? Yeah. Hey, that's the guy from Tremors and Sweet Home Alabama. I am not one of them hot dog pilots. I am the hot dog man himself. Well, hot dog, you are just in my shadow. That's right where you'll always be. What are you two rookies gonna have? Hold on, sis. You are looking at a whole new ball game. I bet you're even gonna immortalize us by putting our pictures up there. Uh, we got two categories of pilots. Prime pilots that get all the hot planes. Your pud knockers dream about getting the hot plane. Now, what are you two pud knockers gonna have? Oh, hey -o. Oh. Look at old Jaeger. On top of the pyramid for five years. Every time somebody goes faster, he just goes up again. Fastest man alive. He's so cute. He reminds me of Keanu Reeves. All it will take is just the sound of a truck. That's the crash truck. <sighs> Ooh, that's hard. I thought I was the only one who had these nightmares. Me too. Nobody ever wants to talk about anything. Everybody's always trying to maintain an even strain. Marry a fighter jock. You marry the military. The military owes me for all this. I went back east to a reunion. My friends could talk about was their husband's dog eat dog, cutthroat it was on Madison Avenue. Little did they know. I wondered how they would have felt if each time their husband went in to make a deal, there was a one in four chance he wouldn't come out of that me. I'm going home to my folks in San Diego. What did Gordo say? He maintained an even strain. <sighs> You think they were talking about sports? No fear. Sometimes they're just such assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Oh, man, he squawks that one, didn't he? Yeah, he must be going for a record. Mach 2, I heard. Mach 2? Okay, wait a second. I think I just put something together. They just broke Mach 1. I think in Maverick Top Gun, they were trying to break Mach 10. Am I correct in that? Congratulations come from a previous record holder. Takes the hand of the fastest man alive, Scott Frostfield. Don't do it, Mr. Yager. Compliments of Poncho, Scotty. I guess that demon lives out at 2.3 on your mock meter. Mach 2 was the magic number. Press likes a nice round number. But you need coverage. Oh, you mean them little root weevils that crawl around popping off cameras? Those root weevils write history. Let them write the damn history and let the pilots fly the plane. Who is he? She also kind of looks like Sophia Bush. It really makes your rocket funding. That's what makes your ships go up. No bucks, no buck Roger. Whoever gets the funding gets the technology. For some reason, I forgot this was about space. Bye, boy. Let's dance. What a cute couple. And why I remember. They're still so in love. You'll be going after that demon that lives out in the thin air. Oh my gosh, if they do something to him, I'm going to be so sad. December 12th. Is he doing it? Hey, Riddler, you got any Beamons? So just take it easy. You got any gum or don't you? Blow me some, will you? I'll pay you back later. Beamons is gum. Okay, drop her, Ridley. Here we go, Ridley. Three. Oh. One. Drop. How come they have to do it like that? To give him a head start on speed? Like, how come they can't take off from the ground? <laughs> He's too confident, you know, like, oh, it could never happen to me. I've done this a lot. It just takes one time. Now. Mach 1, Dear heavens. Oh. Holy crap, he's past Mach 2. Here goes Mach 2. Sorry, Scotty. Bring it on in. Just gonna push this envelope a tad. No. No, let's not. And say we did. Let's not. Oh, frick. No, 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 no. Please, 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 please. Pull up. No, 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 no. This sweet little boys, come on. Please, 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 please. Please, 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 please. Oh. 
think I'm back to base or not? I think it must the best of can be with my head, huh? <laughs> we should chase that old demon this time, huh, Jack? Holy crap. He's just like, oh, I don't know, must have busted my canopy. <laughs> my head. It's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. Star City, Russia. Here's, here's the rockets. It's called Sputnik. We know. The communists have established a foothold in outer space. The space race. That's Here we go. All right, gentlemen, I think we're ready. This footage was assembled from sources operating under deep cover at great risk. This is secret footage of the Russian Karabal rocket of the German scientists that they captured after the war. At any rate, if the Soviets ever do put a man up there, it will no doubt be one of these two. Isn't that their chief designer? Somehow they've developed a program of stupendous demand. He is clearly the genius behind it all. Get that moron off of there. Now we must get something up there any way at all. We could launch a pot. I had in mind the gym. Well, what the hell is a gym? Oh my gosh. An ape. This is not going to be a gym. Oh my gosh, they're going to try to get Yager. No, no. I want Test pilot. Any other type of man. A more manageable type, perhaps? I think you'd be wise to reconsider. Looks like we're heading for some air bases. <gasps> it's Jeff Goldblum! Oh my gosh, no wonder I could recognize his voice. And this is the joint they hang out in. They are expecting us. They, you keep saying they. Well, the best. Give me that. <laughs> the best test pilots in the world. Here? Yeah. I keep thinking they got the right stuff. The right stuff. Anyway, they're all here. Meaning the uh, ace of aces. Who's that? Jaeger. Never heard of him. Isn't there a drink called a Jaeger? Is it named after him? These must be our gentlemen from Washington. Got some lab rabbits. What's that supposed to mean? You boys don't need no honest got pilots. You know, what you ought to get is a little old lab rabbit to curl up inside your capsule. I don't hold with it. I don't either. Tell you what else, anybody who goes up in that damn thing is going to be spam in a can. <laughs> doesn't fit the profile. Jaeger doesn't fit. He didn't go to college. Oh! <gasps> Security clearance just takes too long with those people. With those people. Mm -hmm. For this space race, you don't want our best pilots? We want the best pilots that we can get. What the hell's astronaut mean, anyway? Star Voyager. Star Voyager Gus Grissom. Yeah, I kind of like the sound of that. From the United States Marine Corps, Major John Glenn! John Glenn. I know that name. Okay, wait a second. That is the guy from Apollo 13, the vest guy! And he... He's such a nice smile. He was also in um something else that I really liked him in. No, no, he was a bad guy in something else. He was bald. I can't remember. In fact, I finally got her to marry me. That's who they want. They love the guy. Ooh, coming in hot. Okay. Down here, I want to talk to you about being an astronaut. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Alan Shepard. Dr. Van we came to see. Oh! Got the highest priority! You was made me a little sick. Sounds dangerous. It is. Very dangerous. This isn't, this isn't the guy, though. There's nothing to worry about. That seems like a little to worry about. Ah! 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 Take it out! My gosh! Oh! My goodness. You John Glenn? John Glenn. Okay, I remember him from Hidden Figures, I think. Um, and what's his name played him? Uh, Glenn, Glenn. This entire operation is supposed to be hush hush. We got top secret orders to blend in. So shut up, will you? Fifty some guys trying out for seven spots. They pick us three. There's only gonna be four spots. Mm -hmm. Pilots. <laughs> Buenos dias, Gonzalez. Yeah. Buenos dias yourself. Would you come this way? That doesn't fool me a bit. Then got that guy's navy all the way. I'm gonna open the box just a little bit so you can see it. Hey. <gasps> Jeez. <laughs> Real suavo sense of humor. So there's this little rivalry, huh? Between the different branches. All must be maintained in the position of these two lines. You may begin now. Record is 91 seconds. Which two lines? So they don't really know what they're signing up for, but they know that they want to do it? the record. 93 seconds. Read it and we. Are they trying to stay awake? Oh my gosh, I think they are. That is terrifying. Oh! He's a 
the spicy one. I've got this whole thing figured out. Drill here. Who can drill the brains out of Nurse Merch? You're nuts. She thinks we're all just a bunch of miserable pud knockers. There's a lot of confidence in this group. Well, what in there? Firm. What for? Firm motility factors. Yeah, but, uh, nurse, uh, how am I, uh, supposed to, uh... The best results seem to be obtained through fantasization followed by ejaculation. <laughs> well, that sounds easy enough. Do what? Don't do it. You mind coming in? Don't say it. Please return it to the lab. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> They make them do it all in the same room? Oh, goodness. The humming. So just knock it off because I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> my, that was quick. There's uh, plenty more where that came from. Oh, my gosh. I'd like to meet your wife. My wife? Yes, you're married, aren't you? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm married, all right. Happily? Yeah. I'd like to meet your wife tomorrow. Tomorrow's no good. Uh... Tomorrow. It's, she moved back to San Diego, right? I need you, Trudy. Now look, honey, I'm talking about a whole new ball game here now. Fresh start. I tell you, hon, this astronaut thing is the best way for us. We play our cards right, honey. We go all the way to the top. You mean you? I mean we. We're a team. I feel like she could be Drew Barrymore's sister. Who's the best pilot you ever saw, huh? Looking How long has it been since she's seen him? <laughs> I told her you were stable, well adjusted. Bad a girl. She laughed. She knows you too well, Gordo. Some women just have a problem with men, you know. Fifty-six of our greatest pilots vying to be chosen as one of the first men to go into space. Every kind of stress our doctors and engineers. Oh my gosh. Few will be chosen. <gasps> Dear goodness. And each man knows whoever survives this competition is destined to become a legend in his own time. Holy cow. When that clamp is released, that balloon inside of you deflates. Por favor. I don't understand this one. Do they have a catheter in or something? Day, Commander, sir. Let's go. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Hello. I... Do they need to pee really bad? What happens if they let go of these things? You ever have any explosions doing this? All the time, it's a mess. How am I doing? I think you're gonna be an astronaut. Is this it? Are we deciding? It is my pleasure to introduce to you seven Americans, gentlemen all. Mine, th mine think it's fine. Mine think it's fine. They're all for it. I don't think any of us could go on with something like this. We didn't have pretty good backing at home. He's like, your boy next door, Mr. America. If it's what I want to do, she's behind it. And by golly, my kids are too. By golly. I just thank God I live in a country where the best in a man can be brought out. <laughs> out of the palm of his hand. Which one of you will be first into space? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh my gosh. Jared, brother. Hey, hey Bubba. <laughs> this is for a life magazine. This is Grissom. This is Grissom. These are the greatest pilots in America. How much do they make? Seven, eight thousand dollars a year? Mm. At the most, Mr. Lewis. Mm. At most. Mm -hmm. Giving them five hundred thousand dollars? How's that sound? I bet for all that money, they could call you Virgil. What? He just seems snobby. He's Mrs. Clean Marine. That was weird interaction. Was she snobby or nervous? Going back to the Cape tomorrow. I wish there wasn't off limits to wives. More tests, training. What about F? After hours, I'll run a lot. She has a stutter. She wasn't being snobby. The others just <laughs> want to get up there, get the job done, and keep the Mickey Mouse down to a minimum. Boy, they're good men. Oh, I think he's really mm -hmm. like that. He's not putting on a show. He is just mm -hmm. like a... I guess they think I'm kind of a gung-ho type. Eddie Attaboy. Boy Scout. Harry hair shirt. Harry hair shirt? Well, you agree? I don't get that one. You agree? My own wife? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, that's me, I guess. Oh, they're very, very sweet. It's important to America to get a man up there first. I'm planning on being the first man to ride the rocket. It can't be just me, right? Oh, gosh. It takes a certain type of person because I wouldn't do it for a million dollars. I, I, I'm such a scaredy cat. I, I, I would run so far away. I just, but they, they really want to. And I, it's very brave and patriotic and I'm just very not brave, I guess. Ugh. I thought we were just sending a pod. He can't even get a rocket to go up, let alone a... does not inspire confidence, does it? Cocoa Beach, Florida. This is so... nostalgic. The most important thing in rocket travel. The most thing in rocket travel is blast off. The blast off. Take a blast before I take off. Say what's with your friend. He loves that cell. What are they looking at? Oh boy. Boys. Four down. Three to go. I don't want anything to put this program in a bad light. Sorry, but I am not going to stand by and let other people compromise. This could lead to something very unfortunate. About the plane around that's going on. I'm talking about keeping our pants zipped and our wicks dry around here. As long as a man uses good sense, what he does with his zipper or his wick is his own business. Yeah. Just a minute. Can't go in. They're discussing science with their house. They're discussing science. Public figures, whether we deserve it or not, people are going to look up to us. Oh, wait a minute. Got it all wrong. The issue here is monkey. We are the monkey. What Gus is saying is that we're missing the point. That we all heard the rumor that they want to send a monkey up first. What they're trying to do to us is send a man up to do a monkey's work. We are pilots. So what we have to do is to alter the experiment. <gasps> Who is going to control this thing from here on out? So we got to stick together on this deal. Oh, er, fail for me. I mean, I, I, I commend them for doing all this crazy training, but we got really got to get a rocket. Not actually. Oh my gosh, actually. Astronaut would merely be a redundant component. <gasps> capable of many of the same tasks, and they are much more cooperative. The man or the monkey. Well, here's the thing. I get why you want it to be a man. And I get why that's offensive to the astronauts, but at the same time, is it worth risking their lives? What are you planning on putting a window? There's no window. What about the hatch? We need a hatch with explosive bolts. The final form of the capsule. No hatch. What would happen if controls went out? Pilot would have to fly it back. This is the way it is. No, it changes. Funding makes this bird go up. No bucks. No buck Roger. Press over there. Hey, hey, hey. They all want to see Buck Rogers. We want a window. And a hatch. Yeah, there could be a hatch on the capsule. We do not refer to it as a capsule spacecraft. They're sticking together. Yeah, the astronaut pilot. To have some, to have oh. control of the re-entry procedure. That's how you do it. We appreciate it. You wouldn't mind if we had the press over here take a few photos of it. <laughs> These guys kill me. Okay, smile. How about January 31st, 1961? It worked. Did he go into space? Oh, he's so cute. Captain Ham. <laughs> I think he does secretly want to. You think he regrets not going? He would be so good at those tests. This is another one in Russia. We are sending a man. We got a man up there. We know. Sit down. <laughs> I'm tired of these stupid questions from the press. I'm tired of engineers telling us right. what we can't do. I'm tired of monkeys. I'm sick and tired of being second to those, those darn Russians. There you go. <laughs> Grenade bubble. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> he won't say it. I love him. <laughs> 
I got chills there for a sec. They don't need their helmets on, do they? <laughs> it's okay. I like the look. Go get them, boys. Keep are we actually ready to launch a man into space? And yet out here at this very moment, a rocket waiting in the night. One American astronaut will climb atop that rocket. What may be the greatest death-defying stunt, which one will be first? It's like you shouldn't get married super quick because you're feeling old and want to rush into it. You should wait until you're ready and find the right person. Who is it? I feel like it's Glenn too. Oh, is that Gordo? Oh, it's that other guy. The Jose Jimenez guy. You can tell by his profile. But I do appreciate it, John. I sure really do. Fire con Dios, Jose. Okay, all these faces that I vaguely recognize are killing me. He's in something else. Sitcom? A sitcom I've seen, like from a, from the 90s? Hello. I like that they're not showing us his wife and kids and making this really hard on us because we're gonna do it now. But I said it too soon. Live at the house of Louise Shepard's wife. Close those doors. Everything's a okay, nothing to worry about, just some delay. What kind of delay? There's another hold from NASA, another delay. Gordo, Gordo, I have to urinate. Uh, no, we did not think of that. It's only a 15 minute flight. Could he just do it in his suit? To introduce liquid into the pure oxygen. Oh my gosh. Tell him he cannot. Request that you remain in a holding pattern. Alan must have had four cups of coffee before. Oh boy, he needs to go. Request permission to relieve bladder. Gordo, the man has got to go. Do it in the suit. <gasps> Permission granted to wet your diapers anytime. Mm. It's free on flow, jumping from 30 to 45. I'm a wet bag now. <laughs> you fix your little problems and light this candle. Let's light this candle. Resume the countdown. Whoa. Nine, eight, eight, seven. Whoa, guys, I do not know how this goes. Three, two, one, ignition. Music is promising. We have lift up. Okay. Is that good? Is that okay? Louise, coming down. That's what um Yager That's mine. was feeling. Okay. Oh, I can't fathom. <laughs> Probably really wants to change his clothes. This decoration, which has gone from the ground up. <laughs> Wait a second. How? Oh, okay. Okay, I see how they're doing that. That's cool. Well, my Gus goes up next. Can't wait to talk to Jackie after that. Gus is going up next. Bobby. How long have they been gone? Oh, Gus. I just never realized a gruff, mean son of a. How did you get to go up before me? Charm, hot dog. Pure charm. <laughs> Why don't you just make sure you don't screw the pooch guy? <sighs> oh, God, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's funny. Okay, guys. <laughs> Talk to me, Gus. Oh, okay. He's good, right? It's okay, right? Is he okay? Oh, he's getting claustrophobic. Get him out of there. Who just signed this? Is he okay? He's panicking. Help him. Um, is this real life? Are they leaving him? Please help him! Oh, phew! Was that bad that they lost the capsule? Is he okay? I didn't do anything. I was just lying there. It just blew. I mean, the hatch just blew. Must have been a technical malfunction. That's just blue. The capsule was rocking around a bit, but there weren't any loose items, so I don't see how I could have hit that button. No, 
I was just lying there, flat on my back. Thank you, Mr. Grissom. Did he? Those of hatches have been on jet fighters for 10 years. The damn things have been wrong inside out, and not one of them has ever just blown. It's okay. Oh. Are we going to the White House, guys? Uh, President coming? Uh, Okay, he's alive. In order of the President of the United States, the Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to Captain Virgil I. Grissom, who distinguished himself by valor. These actions reflect great credit upon himself. Be mad at him? Attaboy, Gus! Oh, this feels mean a little. See, this afternoon is shaping up just great. I mean, what did they want me to do in here? Oh, Gus, I wanted to eat in the White House. I wanted to talk to Jackie. Yeah, well, look, honey, I've got to go beer call with the guys. No! The military promised. But they are treating me like I'm honorable Miss Mormon hatch blower. And not do anything wrong! And hell would anyone believe me? Oh, my gosh. Gus, they owe you. They do. But they owe me, too. <laughs> She seems like she's being ungrateful, I know, but really, I get it, too. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Gus has just come back from the second trip into outer space. How do you feel about this trip? Oh, I'm so proud of it. Just doing what monkeys have done. Okay. You think a monkey knows he's sitting on top of a rocket that might explode? These astronaut boys, they know that, see? They I'll tell you go. something. It takes he's a special right. kind of man to volunteer for a suicide mission, especially when it's on TV. You tell him, Jaeger. <laughs> happened? <gasps> Pooches? <gasps> oh. You know, I always hated flying. When I met you, you were already a pilot, so I never had a complaint coming. And when you went up in those planes, me and the kids, I never had any insurance. I always hated all that talk about insurance. You know, the government spends just tons of time and money teaching you pilots how to be fearless, but... Oh, they don't teach the wives. And Penny teaching you how to be the fearless wife of a test pilot. But I guess I liked it. I guess I liked the kind of man who could push the outside of the envelope, flyboy. But I never could stand a man who was one of those uh, bitter guys that just sit around thinking about old times. What is she saying? If I ever see that happening... You what? I'm going right out the front door. Was well, that like an ultimatum? I'm confused. She wants him to be an astronaut? Oh no. Yeah. John, the Russians have sent Titoff up. Titoff, sir. How long? Today. He's orbiting over our country right now. <gasps> we haven't had too much luck with that rocket, John. We're not going to be able to take all the precautions we'd like. They're not going to do as safe as they wanted. Mm -hmm. I said we're ready. No! Wife of astronaut John Glenn. Vice President, I'd like to see Mrs. Glenn for a moment. He's asking for you again. Tell him no. She says no. She still says no. No? Well, didn't you tell her? I will bring in ABC TV. Her words and mine will be heard by millions. The flight's been canceled. Canceled? I will go in and hold her. Nationwide TV. No, she doesn't want to see you. It's better to do it right. What do you mean, no? I mean, no. They better get somebody to tell her to play ball. No. What? Annie. Don't make them. J Johnson. What? <laughs> On. Tell her to let him in with the networks, John. No. She doesn't have to if she doesn't want to. Annie. No. Listen to me. If you don't want the vice president or anybody else to come into the house, then that's it. <laughs> I love John. And I will back you up all the way 100%. I love him. Okay. He's a good man. Can't do that, John. Program. You are way out of line here. I'm running this show here. We'll see about that. And I'm thinking of changing the order of flight assignment. Okay, that's rude. Who are you going to get? Who am I going to get? Said. That's right. He stood up for his wife. And we should commend that. Why are we in Australia? Good day, mate. Hi. Good day. I'm breathing these, eh? I'm, an, I'm an astronaut. What do you do here, astronaut? A buddy of mine's getting ready to fly overhead, up in outer space. And I'm going to be talking to him on that dish. See that old bloke there? He know. He know the moon. He know the star. He'll give you a hand. What? Well, we're sure going to need all the help we can get. So now it's John's turn? Is 
is still a very dangerous one because it's not quite ready. Is that bad? Okay, we're going, we're going, we're going. He's gonna stay up there for a day? Is that right? Are we prepared for that? I'm interested in how this is gonna tie back to Yager. Wow. Of course it needed a window. Oh, and I feel fine. Oh! That view is tremendous. Man, it's a beautiful sight. Seven orbits. This is Friendship Seven. Friendship Seven. Hello, oh, wow, that's so cute. Speed is 17,500. So dizzy. Gosh. We're moving in tonight. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. We're moving in tonight. Friendship 7, Friendship 7, come in, do you read? Sure was a short day. Kind of passes rapidly, huh? I could see some lights down there in Australia. All of Perth and all of Rockingham have turned their lights on. Okay, so Apollo 13 was much after this when they were trying to go to the moon. Possibly it's the heat shield. He's loose. If the heat shield comes off, he'll burn up. He'll fry when he tries to re-enter. Possibly a loose heat shield. What? John, can you hear me? Friendship 7, come in, please. This is Friendship 7. Do you read me? Over. I see something strange out here. Oh, my goodness gracious. What the? I never saw anything like it. What is it? Like fireflies or something. Roger, Friendship 7. Uh, will you correlate the actions of the particles with the action of your control jets? I do not think they were coming from my control jets. You guys all probably think I'm nuts down there. Is that the heat shield coming off? Leaving the fireflies behind. I have no idea what they were. How much longer are you going to keep him in the dark? What are we going to tell him? What do we tell him? We tell him the condition of his craft. Everything is A-OK. -okay. They're lying? It will burn up. There is only one hope. It may be possible to leave the retro rocket pack. It covers the heat shield on. Best you can to keep a zero angle over. Re entry only three orbits over. That is correct. Over. Sure whether or not your landing bag is deployed. It is possible to re enter with a retro package. See no difficulty at this time. <gasps> Roger. They're not telling him still, are they? Alright, we're lined up. Here we go. Oh, my hands are sweaty. We're good. We're doing it. Like, right now. What's that? I mean, it's him. He does that. <laughs> please, 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 please. The ionization blackout. No communications are possible for a few minutes. Few minutes? Friendship 7. Do you read? Automatic systems are not functioning. <laughs> sadder for Gus's wife. She looks so regal and beautiful. Boy, if we'd only had one of those a few years back. The entire program is probably gonna be scrapped. The astronaut boys got the only ticket. A new record of 114,000 feet straight off the ground. Nobody cares about that kind of record. All they want now is capsules up in outer space. I think they still care. Feeling this little old plane right here might be able to beat that record. You might be right. But he wants to too, not just for his wife, who basically said she'd leave him if he didn't keep trying new things. But uh, she would feel so bad though if. It's Alan Shepard! Gus Crystal! Good. Wow, huh? Astronauts! We'd like to give you this new bar. Texas! Holy cow. I'd like to go to Texas and try some Texas barbecue one day. Oh my gosh. Did they really do it like this? What's one plan? He's the one I want to meet. He's right over there. That was rude. I'm gonna go to the moon, I swear to God. I mean it. <laughs> Damn glad to meet you too. John Glenn. Oh yeah. I got me 25 grand a year. Got a free house with all the furniture. And I ain't even been up there yet. I noticed that. You noticed I hadn't been up there yet? Guess they're saving the best for last. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, hot dog. 
hot dog. Who was the best pilot you ever saw? Who was the best pilot I ever saw? <laughs> You're looking at him. I've seen a lot of them, and most of them are just pictures on a wall. Back at some place that uh, doesn't even exist anymore. Listen to him. Some of them are right here in this room. Some of them are uh, still out there somewhere. But there was one pilot I once saw who I He's going to say, you have the right. How close did you ever come to that? Can you let him finish? Well, uh, you're looking at him. Aww. You got any beamers? Hey, what's that? Anyone got clearance? Oh, they're doing it without clearance. What kind of a plane is that? He likes to push that envelope. Hey, it's Jaeger. No, sir, no objection. Oh. That sound, <laughs> the sound of a plane about to take off, that gave me anxiety. I'm a very, very nervous flyer, and it just like had a whole body reaction to that sound. That was weird. <laughs> Does his wife know he's up there right now? Is he trying to beat that Russian record? Someone talk to him. Miss Sally Sisters! Sisters! <laughs> Didn't she play the wife of Tom Hanks in Apollo 13? so fast. What does that mean? It's not even measuring it? Christ almighty. Um. No. Please, 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 please. Start flying. My hands are pouring sweat. Start flying. Oh, my heart is beating so fast. Is there anything you can do at this point? Oh my gosh. Please be okay. Where's his shoot? Where is he? Show me! Oh my gosh. Okay, obviously the planes crash, but where is he? Over there. Oh, freak. Yeah, you damn right it is. Oh. <sighs> May 15th, 1963. Uh, Gordo. Gordo! Huh. We uh, hate to disturb you, buddy, but uh, we've got a launch here. Swift, let's go. Man, they keep doing this to me. Whoa. So is he going to orbit too for a while? Don't go! Hot dog. Oh. Oh. oh Lord, what a heavenly light. The Mercury program was over. Astronaut Gus Grissom was killed along with astronauts White and Chaffee. Fire swept through their Apollo oh, I, I knew Apollo 1 went bad. Gus. Gordo Cooper went higher, farther, faster than any other American. 22 complete orbit. 22? American ever to go into space alone. Became the greatest pilot anyone had ever seen. Wow. Oh my gosh, that was stressful. So, but they were all successful. And if they would have killed Yager, I thought they were going to at the end. Oh my gosh. It was kind of really cool to see how they did that side by side with the fighter jets, astronauts, and you know, part of you feels like sad for Yager because you know, that could have been him and they got all this fame and money. And, but at the same time, it also could have gone horribly wrong and he could have been really right about them being lab rabbits. I just hope that he had a happy life. I was hoping for like a, I know they said about Gus, which is so terrible in the Apollo mission, but I wanted like a little paragraph about everyone else. I know people are gonna be like, that's your millennial talking. It was a little long. There was some shots 
there that just seemed to drag for a little, um, but it still made for like a super great story and showed me more history of the space program, which I think it's so fantastic and amazing, but something I, I have zero, beyond zero interest of ever like, like I have zero desire in that, you know what I mean? Anyways, um, Dennis Quaid, the guy from Apollo 13, he was so cute as John Glenn, the guy from Tremors. It was it was really fun. I still got to figure out who Yager is because that's going to bug me. Okay. Thank you so much for watching along with me. Until next time. Okay, I've seen Gravity. I've seen Apollo 13 now. I've seen Hidden Figures. What else do I need to watch? I'm, I've started from Earth to the Moon. I heard that's amazing. Got to find that time to watch TV, you know? Okay. Bye.